Hi! Welcome to Eric's Movie Corner. I'm Eric, and I'm here to talk about movies. Let's do it! Alright, today we are going to be talking about the 1984 horror classic, A Nightmare on Elm Street. This was directed by Wes Craven, who made this movie. He was inspired by a series of articles he read in the LA Times about some refugees who came to this country and uh, had nightmares while they were sleeping and it got to the point where they were intentionally staying awake and trying not to sleep because they were afraid of their nightmares. Eventually, they fell asleep against their will, as will happen if you stay up for seven days in a row, and woke up from their nightmares screaming and died instantly. Nobody knows why, so he thought that was a pretty... uh, pretty fascinating topic to base a horror movie on so he made up a spooky story to go with it and that's how a nightmare on elm street came to be this movie stars uh a very young johnny depp uh who i believe got his introducing credit on this movie he plays uh the boyfriend of our protagonist nancy uh who is played by heather langenkamp as i record this today it's heather's birthday happy birthday heather So, uh, Heather plays the protagonist, Nancy Thompson. I had the pleasure of meeting Heather a couple years ago at ScareCon New England. Uh, I had the opportunity to get her autograph on my copy of A Nightmare on Elm Street. And I also got a selfie with her. And, of course, couldn't pass up the photo op with Freddy. That was pretty awesome. And then I just had probably the best day of my life when I got to moderate a panel with the women of A Nightmare on Elm Street. In this picture, sitting right next to me is Lisa Wilcox, who starred in parts four and five of A Nightmare on Elm Street. And next to her is Heather, and next to her is Amanda Wiss, who plays Tina, who unfortunately didn't make it past the first movie. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Yeah. I was very pleased when I got to meet Heather, because whenever you meet somebody who is famous, there's the chance that they might be a jerk. Uh, And it's always a bummer when you uh, have somebody that you admire, and they turn out not to be a very nice person (laughs) i'm happy to report that heather is a complete sweetheart and she's she's very nice and takes the time to take a couple minutes to chat with everybody who comes by her table so if you ever have the opportunity to meet her she's pretty awesome our villain in this movie is played by robert england who before this role was probably best known as being willie the friendly alien in the television series v Um, However, this role uh, became iconic, and he is very well known for it at this point. In fact, he probably has a little bit of resentment because people just think of him as Freddy. Uh, But hey, you know, it's the same problem as uh, Leonard Nimoy and Spock. Uh, If you create a character that's that popular and that well known, you might as well roll with it. The character of Freddy Krueger has a glove that has knives for fingers. That's his weapon of choice. And he wears a green and red sweater. Uh, which Wes Craven chose because he'd read an article that says that trying to discern those two colors next to each other uh, creates cognitive dissonance in the brain, and he wanted to do that to his audience, so uh, he chose that color combo on purpose to try and weird out his audience. This movie featured the use of a rotating room for a couple of scenes uh, to get some funky practical effects going on. They're really pretty awesome. I'll show a clip later that shows one of them. This movie was made on a $1.1 million budget and ended up grossing $57 million worldwide. So it wasn't quite as profitable as Friday the 13th and Halloween, but it was still pretty darn profitable. New Line Cinemas, uh, the studio that made this movie, came to be known as The House That Freddy Built uh, and went on to make several of the sequels. So right here is where I'm going to throw up the spoiler flag. Uh, and let you know that uh, from here on out, I'm going to be talking spoilers, I'm going to be giving away some uh, plot points, and showing you some clips from the movie. Uh, So you have been warned, if for some reason you still have not checked out this classic horror movie from 1984, go watch it, and then come back and watch the rest of this. So, uh, now I'm going to show you some clips. So the first thing I'm going to show you here is just an image that's been stuck in my brain ever since I first saw this movie. Uh, I believe the technology used in this scene is pretty simple. It's just some spandex stretched out to look like a wall and then somebody pressing into it. But the 
effect here is really creepy, so check it out. Ah, huh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this next clip is uh, from one of Tina's dreams, and this effect, I believe, was created by just basically puppeteering. They made some really long arms, and some guys with uh, fishing wire on a pole uh, were controlling them as, as Robert Englund walked down the alleyway here. Uh, check it out. Alright, so this next scene is one of the ones I was talking about that uses the rotating room. Uh, clearly they had the actor uh, strapped to the floor with a camera as the room rotated, creating the effect of Tina getting dragged up the wall to meet her grisly demise. Pretty intense. Check it out. All right, this next clip here uh, is when Nancy has fallen asleep at class after the death of her friend Tina, and she starts to have a dream. And in the dream, Tina is getting dragged down the hall uh, in a body bag <laughs> by a force that can't be seen. Again, think this was fishing wire, but pretty effective nonetheless. Check it out. Now this next scene is when Nancy falls asleep in the bathtub. Uh, the way they did this one is they actually had a water tank under the bathtub and a hole in the bottom, in the bottom of the bathtub. So uh, one of the reasons that uh, Nancy has her legs spread in this scene uh, is not only to create the uh, disconcerting, perhaps sexual intent of the claws that come up here, but also to keep the actress from falling into the water tank. Uh, she falls asleep in the tub. Bad news. Check it out. Nancy? What, mother? Don't fall asleep in there. You could drown, you know. Oh, for Pete's sakes. This next scene is when Nancy's boyfriend gets taken by Freddy. Um, I'm just going to show you the part where Freddy drags him into a <laughs> into his bed, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a right after this. There's a moment where uh, a geyser of blood comes shooting back out of the bed, which is pretty intense and used with the rotating room I was talking about. Uh, I'm not going to put that in here because YouTube might have some issues with that. Uh, but one more reason. If you haven't seen this yet, I don't know why you're still watching this if you haven't gone and seen the movie yet, but one of, uh, one of the great practical effects from this movie. So check it out. All right, now this next scene uh, is pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, it's got one of the best quotes from the movie here. So after Freddy has killed Glenn, he just feels like messing with Nancy a little bit. Note that the phone in this scene has been disconnected from the wall. Check it out. And then this last one I'm going to show you right here is from when Nancy drags Freddy out of her dream uh, and his and his fighting him in her house. Yeah, Freddy's already been burnt once, so he's got a little PTSD going on here. So 
uh, yeah, check it out. All right, so uh, Nightmare on Elm Street is a horror classic. Uh, I, if you're still watching and you haven't seen the movie, why, why, why? I gave you a spoiler warning. Why? So yeah, go back and check out the whole movie, 1984's A Nightmare on Elm Street. Get it under your belt. It's worth your time. Thanks for stopping by Eric's Movie Corner. If you enjoyed this review, uh, please like it and hit the subscribe button below and the little bell thing so you get notified when I post new ones for you to watch. I appreciate it. Come back next time.